three five minute rounds in the Bantamweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of three wins, two losses, and one no contest. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 63.6 kilograms. Representing Hell Team and fighting out of Alexandria, Egypt, please welcome Omar, the Submission Boy, Abbas. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, this man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of one win and no losses. He stands 164 centimeters tall and weighs already 60.4 kilograms. Representing KHK Team Bahrain and fighting out of the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain. Give it up for Abdullah Eto. Brave Nation, expect impact. From Bali, Claire to Bahrain, the Vanilla Gorilla, Arn Wallace is your man in the middle, keeping our fighters safe. Imad initiating the clinch, forcing Yakub up against the cage. And this is what we thought we were going to see from Omar Imad, initiating the grappling, the clinches. He needs to be wary of hitting the back of the head. Oh, the elbows to the back of the head, downward elbows. I'd have to see a replay. Uh, a very, uh, there's a couple simple ways of defining what the back of the head is. One of them, imagine a mohawk, or take a cell phone on the top of your head, run that cell phone all the way down the spine. That can't be hit. Another simple way to understand it is, when you hit somebody in the back of the head area, if some part of your limb connects with their ear, it's good. Let's have a look. That view, unfortunately, is obscure. I think it was also the fact that it was a downward elbow. Your elbows have to come at an arcing trajectory. Big shot over the top by Ali Al-Yakoub. Changing level as well is Al Yakub. Al Yakub wants to throw an over an overhand right and take his opponent I out. Wobbled him a little bit there, Carrick. The feet momentarily went from underneath him. And that was no accident. He's trying. He's tr flying knee attempt. Punching the ear this time, picking Completely. his shots well. Uh, one or two of those got through. Again. Again, Brave Nation, again. This is a this is one of the gray areas in mixed martial arts. Both athletes play a role in the back of the head. If you throw a strike that would have hit legally, and the opponent who gets struck in the back of the head moves his head in such a way that the back of the head is struck, there's 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 joint responsibility. So again, very gray area. We've Wish. got a great referee in here. Yeah. He's making sure nothing goes wrong. Now Very stern warning. I don't think we're going to see any more shots on the back of the head. Let's face it, you're not going to argue with big R and three of our Wallace. Be interesting to see if it's just one final strong stiff warning. I like what Wallace is doing there. He's also going over to. He is. He's explaining to him that both Omar both Ahmad, athletes yeah. play a, a play a role here. They have a responsibility. When you're getting yeah. when you're getting those elbows near the back of the head, you can't turn the back of your head so that you get struck. This is as always phenomenal refereeing in the Brave Combat Federation cage. Big Arm Wallace is giving Omar Ahmad the full five minutes with which to recover, with which to regather his sensibilities. And now, if, if you're Al Yakub, you're going to be thinking to yourself, even subconsciously, does this put a little bit of a tick in his brain where he becomes a little bit gun shy in those positions to get off the strikes? Al Yakub's game plan is to win this fight with an overhand right. He's got a tremendous overhand right. It's got concussive force, it's got stunning ability. That's what we're going to see here. Two fighters touched gloves. No hard feelings. Now there's going to be hard feelings. Just a final step warning. There's that overhand you were talking about, Kerrick. It went way wide. I guarantee you we'll see a little adjustment. Oh, beautiful jumping knee by Abdullah Al-Yakub. In that clinch position again, you're not seeing 
Amat or you're not seeing Al Yacoub get those strikes off. No, as Al Yacoub steps up, he's got to be very, very careful. He doesn't get his back taken. Statistically, the highest percentage time to get your back taken is when you're stepping up off the floor. So when you step off that floor, when you get to the knee, when you get to the feet, you got to wizard, you got to overhook that arm. Omar Ahmad doing a good job of trying to elevate those legs. May try and shelf them. Pushing away, creating distance. There's that, feet. that left wizard is what protected the back from being taken. Excellent technique from Abdul Al Yaqub. Arm Wallace being careful for this too with a couple of cheeky little follows early on. Nice reversal from Al Yaqub. Now pressing Omar Ahmad against the cage. Double overhooks, try to pump down. The big shot again from Al Yaqub. Head kicks there if he wants it. But the trouble with throwing the head kick is if you're not quick enough getting it back to the point from which you sent it, you then get taken down. That's right, Phil. If you watch too many highlight reel clips and you want to get one for your own, you don't understand the number of people that looked for that highlight shot and did not get it. And you see uh, Al Yacoub thought about the hammer fist there. A little bit more tentative with his shot selection in those clinch positions. That was an absolutely legal shot. Yep. Omar Ahmad playing to the ref a little bit. He's not going to get anything. Al Yacoub trying to bring the head up of Ahmad, trying to dig in for underhooks. Bit of a stalemate position right now. Omar Ahmad trying to get in on that single. Get the fight to the ground where he feels that will be his clearest path to victory. Good balance so far being exhibited by Al Yacoub. Almost has that leg out, trying to free him off, trying to create distance. Ahmad may want to switch it up to a high crotch or switch to a double. Does not seem to be getting what he feels like he needs out of this single leg. Eldar Eldarov instructing his fighter not to throw any elbows in that position. And not Big takedown by Omar Ahmad. And that's what I was talking about. Does Al Yacoub then have to be very, very tentative and extra selective with his shots? He does. One of the one of the characteristics of the KHK Team Bahrain fighters is they listen so well to their corner. Yep. We saw that one, el one elbow, Eldar Eldarov was like, nope. And it, it stopped. That was very good advice. Uh, an elbow clearly to the back of the head might have been the end of the bout for a, a bout that I absolutely believe Abdullah Al Yacoub is winning. At the moment, he finds himself taken down by Ahmad and Ahmad is not necessarily doing much he scored the takedown but he's not doing a lot to progress or there is a thing in mixed martial arts called lay and pray it's when you take somebody down not to further not to further your position not to try and get a submission not to cause damage with ground and pound but simply to buy some time referee Arn Wallace singing off the scene him sheet seen enough there or didn't see enough as the case may be. Last 10 seconds of the round. Can someone land something definitive? Maybe an overhand, right? A oh, <laughs> little bit late. A little bit of hard feelings, maybe, over a couple of things that transpired during that round. Very interesting round, Kerry. You have to wonder. Has one of the... Uh, the most formidable tools that we saw of Ali Yacoub being taken away from him a little bit with those two stun warnings because if he now throws an errant shot, you could see a mad playing up to it. And he, not only could he get a point taken away, you could potentially see a disqualification. I, 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 I think it, it might well be a disqualification. I think it has been taken away. It's been taken away by a stern warning from our referee. It's been taken away by a multiple stern warnings from his corner. We are not going to see any shots, I hope, that go anywhere near the back of the head. Now, near the back of the head is, can be the, one of the most, if not the most, efficient strike in mixed martial arts. Back of the head is illegal. Last thing on earth you want to do in front of your home nation is lose a fight you are winning by throwing an illegal prohibited technique. Round number two. Would, I would like to see Ali Yacoub have the, the uppercut landed, have uh, loaded, have the knee loaded for that inevitable clinch that's coming. Big shot over the top again, head kick. Um, 
Omar Ahmad is dipping that head when he comes in and he's not necessarily setting these clinches up. He's giving Al Yacoub a little bit of time to react. Abdullah Al Yacoub has an interesting strategy. Instead of s attacking straight in, he's trying to attack from the top with an overhand right and he's trying to come up from the bottom like a submarine with that flying knee. It is, as I alluded to earlier, it's a spectacular strategy, but not one that's necessarily gonna work. Head on the outside now for Omar Ahmad. Trying to work in on that single. We talk about how exhausting it is to be taken down and get up, but it's also exhausting for the perpetrator of the takedown to constantly take somebody down and then to spring back up and essentially having to start all over again. Yacoub needs to take a step back here. On film, these little kicks may not look like too much. Brave Nation, they can be too much. You can hear the sound of the impact from here at cage side. It's like a cricket bat hitting a watermelon. Smack, smack. This exact kick has actually been known to break bones in the foot, break bones in the shins. Oh, he had a little bit of a limp as he got up there, Carrick. I think his left leg might be a little bit impeded. Big over on again from Al Yakub. Omar Ahmad has an excellent skill set. He's just not showing it all right now. Playing a little bit too much of a defensive game. Kicks in unchecked. In Boxing, in prize fighting, in amateur boxing, defense scores points. That's not the case in MMA. Nice timing by Umar Ahmad. Ducked underneath the big shot. Again, beautiful use of the wizard by Al Yacoub. Finds himself in that anchor position of the half guard. May look to free him and unleash hell from this position. We're very close to being where elbows are the single most effective thing you can throw. Takes little energy. Lands with great impact. Abdullah Al Yakub controlling with the underhook. Working the body, doing enough to keep himself honest. Omar Ahmad has the underhook on the leg. Was trying to use that to shift, create an angle for himself, but Yakub intelligently sits down on it. Omar Ahmad has a, a, a cradle of sorts from bottom. No longer. The corner telling. Abdullah Al Yakub should off. step back right yeah. now, allow his opponent to stand back up, and then go back to trying to land that overhand right and jump knee. Gua, Gua, Ito, Gua. Gua. Omar Ahmad momentarily thought about attempting to stand up with the thing. There, it's a, there it is. Oh, I was just going to say they're about to, about to be stood up. Again, a much stronger round. How heavily muscled is that young man's back? Beautiful sprawl. Knee to the body. Huge. The wind taken clean out of the seals of the submission boy. Omar Ahmad nodded. Acknowledged that was a big shot. Omar may be hurt. He may be hurt. That body shot may have done even more than he acknowledged. Finding it hard to get his breath back, to get his senses around him. And is a little bit prone right now. Desperation take down, heavy, heavy hips and sprawl from Al Yacoub. You have to think it would be within his best interest now to stand up out of the guard. There it is. It's not the legs he wants to be kicking right now, it's the body. That body is compromised. When you get hit in the head, after even if it's a tremendous shot, five to ten, ten seconds later, as long as the referee hasn't stopped it, your head is clear. When you get hit in the body, it's cumulative. A little bit goes away, but not a lot. I can tell you Omar Ahmad's body still hurts. Abdullah Al Yakub wants to step back, allow his opponent to stand up, and commence to hitting that body. Body punch, Ito, body punch, body punch. Oh, beautiful shot to the body from Al Yacoub. Very smart to throw that low kick. And there's that overhand right. Again, very smart to throw that, that little pendulum kick and round ends. Terrific round for Abdulli Al Yakub. Any little 
wrinkles that need to be ironed out are going to be ironed out by the great Eldar Eldoroth in the next 45 seconds or so. For those of you who don't spend a lot of time in a fighter's corner, what goes on right now, first five to ten seconds, you let the fighter rinse, the, you take their mouthpiece out, you let them rinse their mouth it. While they're doing that, you rinse their mouthpiece off so it's nice and fresh when it goes back in. Give them a chance to catch their breath. If they're not breathing properly, you tell them to breathe properly. And then you give them two pieces of advice, one thing not to do, one thing to do, and then that's it. it they're going to go out for the third and final round of the evening for these two. Ladies and gentlemen, forgive us, forgive us if we are not talking you three. The replays at the moment are monitor in front of us. Has decided it does not want to watch the rest of the fight and has packed up. As I say over and over again, Phil, computers are not appliances. I've got big respects for Omar and Mod's skill set. I just want him. He's got great kicks, great punches. There's the beginning of some kicks. I want to see him let those hands go straight down the center. He's got the reach advantage. His opponent is throwing looping shots. He's got a very clean one, too. I want him to show it to Brave Nation right now. Nice inside leg kick. What I've enjoyed about the performance thus far from Al Yakub is the way he's grown into this fight. Faced a little bit of adversity again with a jumping knee. Needs to be careful in this position with those shots. Okay, okay. Very fine point of judging that we just saw there. An open hand on an opponent's face pushing can have the potential to inadvertently push into the eyes. That, of course, is forbidden. There was not a warning there because it wasn't happening. There was just a reminder that no pressure can be put on the eyes from that open hand. Omar Ahmad trying to get the takedown. You wonder how much he has left in the tank. We did see him start to flag, start to fatigue a little bit at the end of that second round. And a big knee to the body which seemed to deplete the energy levels. Al Yakub working the body now. Abdullah Al Yakub very, very wisely is listening to his corner and no longer throwing hammer fists or downward elbows anywhere towards that back of the head region. We've got a quick timeout. I don't know what for. A little bit of an eye poke, perhaps. I wonder how much of this is gamesmanship. And don't know if it was an eye poke. Don't know if it was an eye punch. And again, ladies and gentlemen, apologies. We're not privy to your replay if you are seeing it on the screen. All we can see at the moment is Omar and Mad in Th the corner, slumped down, finger over his or hand over his eye. There is a world-class medical team. There are at least three doctors I know of standing by. There are multiple ambulances outside. If any question is raised by a fighter about an eye, any other medical issue, it will be attended to immediately and addressed thoroughly. quite sure what's happening. Got a towel coming over to dry the area. <laughs> Sounds like Omar Ahmad may not want to continue with this fight. Head of regulatory affairs, Dickie Larkin, having a quick word with our referee on this. Arn Wallace. I think believes the fighter can continue. Medical staff, I think the fight believes the fighter can continue. The fighter does not want to continue. Omar Ahmad has chosen not to fight. Your winner, Abdullah Al Yakub from KHK Team Bahrain. It's not precisely the way he wanted to fight. He wanted to win that fight. But he tried his hardest to win that fight the way he wanted with a big overhand right, with a jumping knee. We don't have an official time. We don't have the official word of precisely how it was stopped, but we do have a winner, Abdullah Al Yakub. Al Yakub now walks over to the corner to show respect to his oppo opponent, Omar Ahmad, and as well his opponent's corner. It's one of the many parts of mixed martial arts that I love so much is at the end of the fight, each fighter goes and speaks to the opposite fighter's corner, receives congratulations, ex and ex 
extends respect. What I think is going to happen now, because the eye poke was accidental, uh, it was fight ending, and it happened at a happened deeper after stage, happened at a deeper stage of the third round. We could conceivably be going to the judges' scorecards here, Kerry. If we go to the judges' scorecards, that, that that's a, a fine and proper way to end it. It's not the only one I could imagine, however. I say because it was an accidental foul, because it was in the third round of the fight. Under the unified rules of mixed martial arts, carrying at this juncture, we go to the scorecard. That's correct. correct. It's correct. It, it, it was tweaked a little bit recently, but basically, until you've had enough of the fight so that the judges can definitively say who they thought won. Yep. First, think about it. First minute of a fight, you got no idea what's going on, even after the first round. But past the midpoint of round two, judges have a very clear idea about who is ahead. It certainly is clear to me. I think it's ever clear to everybody who's watching in Brave Nation. They'll go to the judges' scorecard. And it should be announced in fairly short order. Again, Brave Nation, I always apologize for having to wait during this moment. The fighters sure don't like it. Fans don't like it, but it has to be done. Every die, dot. Every I has to be dotted, every T has to be crossed, and Bill, we may have our instant replay back. Great work done by Al Yakub. There's that potentially fight ending flying knee. Quick little downward elbow that was quickly cautioned against. I wonder if we can get an angle of the eye poke before we quite see it. And yes, we are going to the judges' scorecards. to make his way into the cage for the official decision. You have to say, with, with the, the, the greatest of respect to Omar Ahmad, as the fight was progressing, Abdullah al Yakub was edging away. He was taking that, those, the, that was like the, the, tortoise, the tortoise in the hair. He was gaining traction slowly but surely. He was indeed, Phil. I, I keep a all utterly unofficial running total for every fight. And I had Abdullah al Yakub ahead very clearly by 20 to 18. Four time cage announcer of the year, Mr. Carlos Kramer, is inside the cage. Just getting final checks with head of commission, Deggy the Bandit Larkin. And we have an official decision. Mr. Carlos Kramer, make it official, my friend. All right, ladies and gentlemen, another great war on our Brave TF 57 historic night. This battle comes to an end with a technical decision given to our winner out of the red corner.